If you're anything like me, you got sprites and they need blasting. There's only one thing to do. You gotta use Sprite Blaster. Hello and welcome to the Sprite Blaster demo video. I'm gonna teach you about Sprite Blaster and what it does and how to use it. So, let's get right into it. I've got the Sprite Blaster demo scene open here that comes with Sprite Blaster. You can see that there's four sprites in this scene. There's the logo, there's the spinning barrel, there's a box, and there's an animated coin. And I can blast them all with Sprite Blaster. Oh yeah! couple things to note. Up here in the right you can see the blast map that's going to be used. Well what's a blast map you're probably asking? A blast map is just a texture that defines the pattern by which the sprites are going to shatter when you blast them. And right now I've got the middle one selected. It's kind of a mid-range blast map. It's got some medium-sized pieces and it's going to make it's going to work with a pretty wide range of sprites. It's probably my favorite of the blast maps that Sprite Blaster comes with. If I want bigger pieces, I can select this first blast map. This is going to give me much chunkier, larger pieces. Uh, maybe works a little bit better with wooden textures, but logo still looks pretty reasonable. You got to be careful though, because these chunks are so big that sometimes with little tiny sprites like this coin, it's going to miss. This coin is going to fall right in the middle of a one chunk, and it's not actually going to shatter into anything. It's just going to shatter into one piece, which is the same as what it was. So that one's not great for little tiny sprites. This third one though is wonderful for little tiny sprites. It's full of little bitty pieces and you're going to get really good shattering on all of your sprites, big and small. You're going to take a little larger performance hit with this one because you're going to get so many more pieces, but Sprite Blaster is super efficient. It never creates new game objects to get its blasting done. It only uses a custom shader and it generates quads dynamically that it maps uh, using the blast map and your sprite. So we can see that if I turn on multi-blast here, just lets me spam the button and it almost ends up looking like a particle effect. You're just getting so many pieces coming off of it and barely any hit to your performance at all. I can also adjust the duration for the blast. So the default is one second and I can crank that way up and I'm going to get really cool looking shattery slow blasts on my stuff. You can also achieve the same effect by adjusting the time scale within Unity, but that's going to obviously slow down the rest of your game as well. I like to leave this setting at, at the default at one second. I think that one looks pretty good. So those are the basics of Sprite Blaster. Let's get into what it's going to take to use Sprite Blaster for your project. So the main thing you need to know is there's this Sprite Blaster prefab within the Sprite Blaster directory that you can drag into your scene. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make a new scene here and drag that in. It's going to be configured by default with some very reasonable settings. It uses that second mid-tier blast map by default. You can change that to the one of the other two or you can make your own. If you go to the website, there's a lot of great information about how to make your own blast map. Don't change this box material. That's very important that it uses the blast shader to get to provide the mapping between the blast map and the and the texture in your sprite. These X and Y curves define the direction and the intensity at which the pieces are going to move. So basically the X curves, the, it's going to randomly choose from a curve in each one of these sets for each piece and it's going to tween it in that direction over the lifetime of the of the piece. So generally, it's going uh, with these with this set of curves. It's going to either go right or left, and then based on which Y curve is selected, it's going to go up and then down a little bit, or up and down, and well, quite a lot. You can define your own curves here to get any sort of blast pattern that you really want. This gradient option here defines the tint that's applied to each piece over its lifespan. So the default one simply has full color until the very end, and then an alpha goes to zero, so it fades out uh, the, during the last 20% of its life. Blast duration, you saw already, that's the same as a slider that was in the demo scene. It just it just specifies the lifespan of each piece that comes off of your sprites. This layer property just determines the Unity layer on which the piece is rendered. So if you have custom cameras set up or you need uh, cust you have custom depth requirements, you can put your your pieces on different layers, on a different layer. They all go on the same layer, but you can define that layer right here. Okay, so now that Sprite Blaster is ready to go, I suppose that I'm going to need a Sprite to blast. So I'm going to make a new game object here. It doesn't have to be a child of Sprite Blaster. It can be anywhere. And I'm going to add to it a Sprite Render. And then I'm going to just hook up maybe that barrel Sprite uh, to my Sprite Render. There we go. 
and let's move it towards the camera a little bit and then let's move it up a little bit to be more centered in our view there we go looking pretty good so now I'm gonna cheat a little bit I wrote ahead of time this blast on destroy script which simply gets your sprite blasted apart when it is destroyed and let's take a quick look at that script very simple all it does is in the on destroy function which unity calls automatically when your sprite is when your object is destroyed it's going to get a reference to its sprite render and then it's going to call that blast method passing in the sprite and passing in the matrix the sprite so that the so the sprite blaster knows which texture it's working with and the matrix so it knows its orientation in three space so that it can line up the pieces that come off of it and that's it this is really the only line you're going to need to get your sprites blasted and you can call it from wherever you want Sprite Blaster is set up as a singleton, so you always have access to this static uh, instantiation of Sprite Blaster. And that's it. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to run this scene, and then I'm going to select that sprite that I created, and I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard to get it removed from the scene, which also triggers on destroy. It's very handy. And bam, there we go. Sprite blasted. Let's see that one more time. Restart the scene. Select that object. Boom. Different shatter pattern this time. Every time it gets blasted, it's going to choose from a different random uh, location on the blast map, and then it's going to use a different random set of curves from the Sprite Blaster X and Y curves. So you're going to get different results every single time you blast it, which is good, I think. And that's it. Those are the basics of Sprite Blaster. You can go to the website and get a lot more information about how to, how to create your own blast maps and more detailed look at how uh, how, how Sprite Blaster is implemented. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.